I'm Linda Nickel, and welcome to another session of my Happiness Hour. Um, it's really nice to see so many familiar faces tonight, and I, I noticed a few new ones. So if this is your first meeting, we do this every Wednesday night, live here on Zoom. And to keep up with all the um, upcoming presentations, I post them on Tuesday to my Instagram page, which is at Cousin Linda, and on my website, lindanickel.com. And there's a little bit more description of those classes. So if you've missed any of the presentations or maybe you saw them and um, somebody kind of covered more tech technical stuff, you may want to go and uh, catch those again. You can find them. They're linked um, from my website to YouTube. So if you haven't figured it out by now, I get really excited about meeting new people and that's why my goal here is to help us all connect, inspire, and create. So to, to, we can start that tonight by using the chat line. Please add your Instagram and your website or other social media so that everyone sees those and they can kind of check out your social media accounts. Next Wednesday, Ruth Hoyt, who some of you guys know, she's a South Texas wildlife photographer, and she's going to be here again to share some of her tips on photographing birds. And her presentation is going to be called Coming at You, Birds in Flight. So Ruth is um, planning to talk a little bit about gear, a lot about camera settings, and how to set up from a photo blind or in the field. And tonight's presentation is Coaching for Creatives. And our speaker tonight is Aaron Randall. Aaron is a certified agile and coactive coach who works with corporate clients in addition to private sessions with individuals. And last year, Aaron left corporate America and started her own business, Admiloria Coaching. Um, her mission statement is simply, I stand for joy, for people living best lives, and for people doing the things that scare them the most. Erin is going to introduce us tonight to what a coaching session with her is like. And she's invited three artists to join her. Her first guest is Lisa Katrina, who is a jewelry designer and a metalsmith artist. Barbara Vance, who is a retired commercial multi-engine pilot who picked up a camera five years ago. And John Fisher who is an off the beaten path landscape photographer. So as always, if you have any questions, drop them into the chat and I'm gonna put those in front of Erin um, as I can squeeze them in, squeeze them in after her presentation. So uh, with that, Erin, I'm going to pass it back to you. And uh, I wanna thank these guests for, for coming on. I really, we really appreciate it. So I, it's gonna feel like being in a hot seat, but Erin promises me that she won't hurt y'all. So with that, Erin, it's yours. Like Linda, we gotta work on those pep talks a little bit because now they're like, <laughs> ah, ah. No, but Linda does bring up an incredibly good point. Uh, to do a coaching session in front of someone else is an incredibly uh, generous thing to do. And, you know, to hey, do Aaron, this live is even hey, better. Aaron, excuse, mm -hmm. Aaron, let me, let me interrupt you. Can you, mm -hmm. you pin to me? So I, I'm, I'm just seeing... unpinned you. Okay, great. Sorry about that. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> okay, so like I was saying, though, it is incredibly generous of these three people to be willing to do this uh, in front of everybody here. So with that being said, um, the first time you all saw me come on, we talked about powerful questions and how they can work with people to add that connection. And you're gonna see me demo a lot of those same ideas here tonight, working with these three different people. The first one I've asked to join me is Lisa. And she is, and I'm gonna start sharing my screen here at this point because I want uh, people to see this part of it as well. Lisa, there we go, there's Lisa. Uh, she is not only a metalsmith and jeweler, but she's also a knitter. And so I have a deep and lasting fondness for her knitting. But she sent me these three images uh, from which we might work from tonight. One is a ring that she created as part of her uh, design work. The second is that lovely purple pendant that you see there with the flower on top. And the third is this gold ring down below. 
And Lisa, if you don't mind, this is the image that I thought we might take a look at here tonight, okay? So the first thing is, can you help me to understand uh, what it is that you've created here? Uh, this was a project for my precious metals class at Austin Community mm -hmm. College here in Austin, Texas. And um, one of the final classes I took for my degree. And this one, I wanted to convey a deconstructed knitting stitch. Um, it's funny that you mentioned knitting. Um, I never stray too far away from it. So um, this is a, a deconstructed knitting stitch and what it looks like. And so I, I cut, um, I, I think, 57 jump rings. And mm -hmm. then um, we created a tool. My instructor and I created a tool for me to cut those in half and then attach those to a flat piece of 18 karat gold and then um, wow. soldered them all down at once so because you don't want to solder them you know one at a time it's too much trouble and you know the it, chances of it going awry are really high so you want to see if you can do it all in one, one in one go, go. Mm -hmm. so what do the symbols here is their meaning behind those symbols um, it is just a knitting stitch and, and it, it, it is a, but it doesn't look like a knitting stitch because the 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 um, shapes are a little separated. Mm -hmm. So I guess it, when you go to, you know, like a fine dining restaurant and they bring you a, you know, like deconstructed strawberry shortcake and it's all in pieces and you don't know how that goes together. But this is, you know, kind of like a, you know, piece of knitting work, oh, wow. um, but in a knitting texture, if you will. So part of this ring then is actually the texture as much as anything and that deconstructed yes. aspect for it. That wow. texture. So you said that you also created a tool with your instructor to make this ring, to get the, uh, to cut the rings in half, you said? Mm -hmm. uh, we did, we had to, uh, we, what we did was we took a um, fine file and cut the end off of the fine file, the, the filing part of it, and you just use the handle. And then you have to heat that up past um, the magnetic, past the point where it's magnetic to get because it's tool steels and so you want it to be soft mm -hmm. so you can work with it and, and create something new out of it and so you have to heat it up past a point um where you can get it to be soft and somewhat malleable um to create mm -hmm. um, a, a groove down the middle of the end of it it was a cylinder uh, like a cylindrical dowel and, and you create a, a groove down the middle of it and then as you turn um, a coil of jump rings um, halfway and then cut and then halfway and then cut and halfway and cut and you get um, half jump rings. Out of okay, so what was difficult for you in creating this piece? The design work, um, trying to figure out how, I mean, like, do you want to, you know, add the, the texture to it after it's a ring, um, mm -hmm. before a ring you know it try you know negotiating mm -hmm. that part and we discovered it was easier to add the texture to it before we made it into a ring and um and what then, did you learn throughout this process how to be careful and not mar what you've worked so hard to create <laughs> oh, i have a piece of leather that is tooled with this with this shape with these shapes <laughs> Um, like a tool piece of leather, but it's with these shapes in reverse. Um, it sounds like you should have that companion piece of leather as the accompanying piece to this ring, so that people. That's a brilliant idea. I should craftsmanship <laughs> for creating it. I should because it took. Um, it's a it's a very thick piece of leather to prevent um, any damage to mm -hmm. all that hard work. And then what we did was sweat solder, and so you're putting a tiny piece of solder on each half jump ring, melting that, and then putting the half jump rings on the flat part, and then, by, you know, and then um, you know, fusing those oh. together with that little bit of solder on the back. And that creates, you don't have as much of a, a shadow of the solder around mm -hmm. the texture. And um, we also used a broken burr spinning at a high rate in the flex shaft to create kind of an etched texture around the sides and background because there isn't 
for just for practical reasons, it's it's beautiful. And right. the other reason is um, because you can't get the tools. In, you know, you, they don't make tools small enough to get in there to polish it. So okay. they do make tools. But I'm hearing can... I'm hearing a lot of craftsmanship mm -hmm. that goes uh, goes into this, but as well as mastery and design and focus and meticulous. Oh, absolutely. How does this work represent your values as an artist? I really value craftsmanship. That's what I want my pieces to say about me. And, you know, this is, you know, picking up, you know, metal smithing, it, it's, it's an art and it's an art that's passed down through generations and in families. And um, it's something that I want to, you know, learn enough about where I can pass along the technique later on mm -hmm. um, to, you know, in a classroom setting, if, if, uh, if I'm lucky to be a part of that, um, that could be, it's just, it's just some, something that you, that you pass on. It, it's not something that you just grab a book and learn. And, and, right. It sounds like generational know. memory. It is. is. It's about. generational memory. Mm -hmm. And I hear when you talk about this, I hear your connection to those people that came before you. I feel like it. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> and I kind of see, yeah, that blush of pride coming. But like, yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. Whole <laughs> hands through the centuries. So what do you want people to see when they look at this piece of work? I want them to see the time and effort that it took to create something like this. Mm -hmm. That it wasn't just something that was, you know, it's not a cheap piece of jewelry. It's, it's, um, it, it took thought, it took time, it took effort, it took design work, it took creativity, it took, you know, every ounce of um, holding my hand steady to get all those pieces ingenuity. on there. Just it took a great deal of ingenuity <laughs> on your part right. to do this. Yeah. Right, right. Hmm. What else does this piece say about you that we haven't already mentioned? It says that I'm pursuing metalsmithing, but I'm never going to get up the knitting. I really am not. <laughs> I'm not I have no vested interest in you giving up the knitting anyway. So I'm like, right, no, no, let's keep right. the knitting there. We like that. I, I thought at one point that I would have to choose, you know, between, between the two or, you know, I'd have to dedicate my time somehow and, um, you know, pick one or the other. And I think this shows that I never stray too far from the knitting. And I think it also shows that I love the, in, in my very first class that I took in December, 2018 um, at Austin Community College, they asked me why I was in the class. And I said, I love the tedious picky details. I said, I find them relaxing. Mm -hmm. And, um, and there, and my instructor was like, that's this class. <laughs> sure, but we talked like a little like bit about right holding spot. hands through generations, but it also mm -hmm. sounds like, found, feels like you've found a way to hold hands with the different skills that you love. Right. Right. Wow. Okay. That's pretty powerful. What do you think you might try next? Uh, my own line of jewelry. I'd yeah. like to do that, you know, you know I, I've made some, a few, a few pieces here and there, but um, nothing with, you know, that you want like a cohesive look to um, mm -hmm. what you're creating and, um, so, you know, some kind of common theme that yeah. stretches across all the pieces and things like that. That's what I'm working on right now. So Lisa, I love this piece. And the reason I chose one was simply because it was so original mm -hmm. and it wasn't expected and it was so different and unique. But I do love the craftsmanship element, you know, that connection through all the pieces that comes through here. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's why I love this piece and because oh. it's so unexpected. Thank so thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, with that, I'm going to let you go. And okay. we are going to come over to Barbara. All right, so Barbara, I'm going to, can you come on up? And then I'll pin the video to you. So everybody, when I first spoke with Barbara and I heard about, you know, the pilot, you know, the multi-engine, I was like, that is really serious. I mean, that's, so that's why Barbara's a daredevil and the like, all right? So Barbara, do we have you on yet? I'm on. Okay, good. Uh, you can go ahead and start your video, okay? And then okay. I can go ahead and pin the video to you. I'm on. Excellent. 
Okay. So Barbara sent me these three images. Uh, and I think she sent the one of the goats because she'd heard me talking to Valerie in previous episodes about how I needed goat photos and Tiny Goat Friday and everything. So there was the goats, <laughs> this beautiful photo of a bird, and then this purple flower down below. And I must confess, Barbara, that I chose that purple flower. And it's not just because I've had so much uh, fun with purple and the light. Okay, so where was this photo taken? In my yard. Oh, wow. Tell me a little bit more about your yard. What kind of flowers do you have back there? I, uh, I'm a pretty serious gardener, mm -hmm. and it's fun to be able to capture some of what I grow on camera, on digital whatever, <laughs> on images. Um, so I have flowers and vegetables, and most everything is, uh, most everything I grow either blooms or attracts pollinators or both. Um, so you, know, you something... must have loved Jose Madrigal's uh, presentation last week where he had those giant oh, bees. Absolutely. Yeah. So bees and, and birds and butterflies and hummers and everything. So this, this winter, um, well, early spring when it was still, you know, we were having some cold, wet weather. And so uh, several mornings I just went out trying, playing with some macro things and, um, there wasn't a whole lot blooming yet that early, but it was just kind of fun to focus. Like this bloom is probably um, half inch, three quarters of an inch total. And so it sounds like a tiny droplets in what it. You're telling me. Wow. Pardon? So this flower is actually quite tiny? Quite tiny. Oh, wow. What kind of flower is it, just out of curiosity? It is a Texas mountain laurel blossom which is Texas mountain laurel is a, is a shrub, small tree. It's and that's what it smells like grape Kool-Aid as I go by, right? It, exactly, and the bees love it. Oh my God, well, I love it too. I, I, I've got to confess there. Um, so I heard, you know, you're a serious gardener. What does being a serious gardener mean to you? Uh, it, it, I think it's just kind of a connection. If you just um, have, pretty grass and shrubs that, you know, that can look nice when you just walk by them. That's, that's a, a lovely yard, but when you, when you do it yourself and you get down in the dirt and you're digging and trimming and planning and... Connection um, to the land, is that what I'm hearing? Yes, absolutely. What else are you connecting to when you, when you do your own digging? Well, it's really, I think, just my own... Um, it's kind of my happy place and it's where I feel I don't know, sort of whole, <laughs> just real um, connected and fulfilled and mm. I don't know what words to use exactly. But no, those are great words, connected, fulfilled, whole. Yeah. And I love that you've taken an image here where you've shown us a tiny piece of that whole. You know? So sometimes I get in close and sometimes I get broader things. I just enjoy catching what, what I think is beautiful. Yeah. So what do you hope that people viewing this photograph, what do you hope that they see? Well, in this case, I, again, I, I chose to zoom it in pretty close. So I hope it catches people's eye as they skim by an Instagram. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, so the color, the first thing I, I would think someone might, that might maybe slow someone's scrolling would be the, the color contrast of the purple and the green. It, it really but then I also, yeah, if, you, if you expand it there, you can really see a reflection in that droplet, which I tried to focus on. Yeah. So I hope that people are looking at it a little deeper. And, and so some people are going to, not see it at all. Some people might stop on just the color and others might might engage for a little bit longer and see something deeper like the reflection. So those techniques that you're employing there, were those new for you to try with this or were there something that you were really stepping into mastery on? Oh, I, I have a long way to go to do anything like mastering, but um, I've been playing with macro for a, a while. Um, I take spells that whether I put the macro lens on and really play with it because it, I do use a special lens for it. But 
it's it it does it, it is a learning curve and a and a practice curve and things like that. So it's it's good for me too. I mean, I'm a lot of what I enjoy about photography is the continual stretching and growing that I do for myself. But I hear connection coming up there as well. You know, by practicing, like getting out there and doing this on a regular basis, you're connecting to that skill and how to practice it more deeply. It requires, anything we do that we want to do well requires practice, right? That should be a tattoo someplace, I fully believe. If you want to do this, you're going to get out there and you're going to do it a lot. You're going to fail, you're going to fall down and face plant, but you're going to get back up and do it again. That's right. So we talked a little bit about the color and what people saw there, but what are you hoping for people to feel? What kind of feelings do you want to invoke? Um, I, I guess in this, as in a lot of my photography, I sort of hope that people can, can appreciate, I, I guess I, I think when I post something on Instagram, I think, okay, I want somebody to either, either wish they had, you know, could see that or could be there. So I'm, I'm trying to sort of engage the person, I guess, to, to appreciate nature. I think I'm kind of an advocate for, um, for what I'm shooting. I want people to appreciate it the way I do. So I guess I'm trying to. I love that. Was I love, that word, I love that word advocate there. I think that's really important. It's like you're standing up for nature is what I hear you saying. Yes. So whether it's save the pollinators or um, slow down and enjoy the flowers, or maybe it's even, even in some travel photography, if it's appreciate the, this, this place and um, not take things for granted, maybe. Hmm. And all of a sudden, I just had this image of you back when you were literally down digging in the dirt, where you have that deep connection to the land. And this is, you want people to have that connection as well. Yeah, it means a lot to me and not everyone's going to have it. I mean, a lot of people would rather be in a city or, you know, there's mm -hmm. everybody to each his own, of course. But for those that have an inclination toward nature, I just hope I can bring something that causes them to... Um, appreciate it a little bit more. Hmm. What are you proud of in this photograph? What are you proud of having done? Oh, that's a good question. Well, I, th oh, I don't know. I think I just, I guess I'm just proud that I got enough focus on that center drop that um, I was, well, maybe my patience. I think this one took a lot of patience to find just the right drop and, and be able to focus on it and catch a reflection in that droplet. So um, I think I'm proud of my patience there because I'm, photography is the only place in my life that I really have a lot of patience. <laughs> mm, you have to have a lot of patience when you work in the yard and the garden. You have to wait yeah. for that to bloom. You have to wait till next year to see what comes back. I guess so, but there's a lot to do between now and then. I don't think I don't think of it in the same way. Yeah, as I do. Sure. <laughs> so, out of curiosity, what would you do differently if you were to photograph this mountain laurel blossom again? I'd probably try to get in even closer, <laughs> maybe. Mm -hmm. And if possible, what experiments would you try with a photograph like this? Oh, just probably typical uh, setting changes and, um, you know, catching the light in different ways and different angles. Hmm. How can people know you through your photography? Uh, I think I'm kind of an open book. Uh, I think it's obvious that I enjoy nature and country kind of kind of things. So, so there's that. I hope I, I do a variety of photography. I'm not just a flower photographer or just macro or just birds or just travel. Um, I like a variety of things. So um, maybe that's a good thing that maybe I'm varied and interesting, or it could be <laughs> that I'm that I can't. Uh, 
focus on one thing. I don't know, but it it just tells that I, you know, that I, it's I, maybe kind of a. Hope, hopefully, it's a positive thing and, and lively and active rather than. Um, Barbara, this photo. Focus. <laughs> yeah, this this photo is beautiful. When I look at this photo, you know, I do number one just notice those deep colors that you talked about. But I get a deep sense of peace looking at this photo. Well, that's and nice. I can only imagine what what it would what it would have been like to number one create a yard or a garden in which something like this can grow. But then the generosity of heart to share this with other people. And I also confess that I really wish for like a scratch and sniff capability on computers <laughs> so that we could all, you know, share the grape Kool-Aid smell of this. Yeah, I think of that in Instagram a lot. I wish I could smell a lot of the beautiful things I see other people posting. Yeah. Your connection to both nature and to people, but that generosity of heart there, I think that comes through loud and clear looking at Thank this. Thank you. Thank you, Erin. I appreciate that. And yeah, I hope you feel that just as much because this is, it's a gift to those of us that can see it too. Yeah. Well, it's fun to share. <laughs> You're like, but I was out there awfully early with that big lens trying to get that water droplet, you know, to come in. <laughs> yeah, you, know? you don't want it just buried in the computer. Hmm. Wow. It sounds like this piece is actually important to your heart too. Yeah, I think it is. Hmm. We can look forward to as like, you know, the Christmas card this year or the uh, spring note cards. Well, probably spring note cards. Christmas tends to be a little more of a seasonal thing. <laughs> okay. Well, but Barbara, thank you. Thank you for sharing this. And thank you for having this, me, Erin. This, this color, honestly, those of you, I, I really do love the color purple, even though it gives me fits when I try to watercolor with it. But yeah, I get a deep sense of peace just looking at this and imagining you out in a garden. Well, I appreciate you trying to draw out. Um, it, it, it's a good um, exercise to, that you ask these questions and it makes us look deeper into, into what we're trying to achieve with, mm -hmm. with our photography or whatever art we're playing with. Yeah. You know, let's circle back to that aspect once we get through with this next session, because there'll be a few minutes at the end for questions and answers, and we can talk about why it's important for us as artists to think about the values we hold dear and how we're reflecting those through our own work and the like. Okay? Okay. Thanks, Barbara. Thank you. All right. All right, John Fisher. Okay, everybody. So John Fisher is a landscape photographer. Uh, he's also a Photoshop and Lightroom guru, uh, which apparently is really, those are big things for photographers to be able to do. I've never mucked about with either of those applications, but I know people who spend their lifetime really mastering them. So the fact that he can do both is truly amazing. Uh, his website is up there as John P. Fisher, which by the way, if you uh, search for John Fisher photographer, you will also get a bar mitzvah photographer in New Jersey, but I did not think that was John. Okay. And when John is not here doing work like this, he is uh, a pretty good software ar architect as well. So he's multi, he's a multi-threat. Okay. So John, you sent me three photos. One of, you know, this beautiful night sky, but this really cracked parched landscape. You sent over these mossy rocks with the water cascading over them. Uh, it looks like the Pacific Northwest. And this image down here of uh, that gorgeous lake and sky and autumn, autumn view. Yes. All right. But the one I wanted to talk about was that one. Which is my favorite. Well, <laughs> that worked out well then. Yes. Well, uh, where was this photo taken? This is in the San Juan Mountains of Colorado. Mm. You want to be a little bit more specific about where in Colorado, where the San Juan? Um, the San Juan Mountains are in the southern region of the Rocky Mountains. It's a small kind of sub set of mountains off the Rockies. Uh, it's very, very popular during the fall because of the gorgeous stands of um, the trees Breaking here, the aspens. 
Yeah, the quaking um, aspens. Yeah. Yeah, aspens. And it draws photographers from around the world to this area every fall. And this was the last stop on an 18 day road trip that took me from Dallas to literally within miles of the Canadian border in um, Montana. And then on our way back, we stopped in uh, Colorado for a couple of days and caught this uh, gorgeous scene of some very moody skies over this tiny little beaver pond. I was actually standing on the um, uh, dam, the beaver dam, to take this photo. That sounds stable and not at all like you could have gone into the drink. No, it was very much a rickety uh, situation. <laughs> And uh, with a lot of expensive camera gear, we had to be very careful uh, where we set up and uh, every step was a little bit precarious. So when you were talking about being in the San Juan Mountains, what was it specifically that drew you to this spot as opposed to elsewhere in the San Juan Mountains? I do a fair bit of research and pre-planning when every time I take a trip, um, you know, Mother Nature is always going to throw you curveballs and you always have to be able to roll with the punches that Mother Nature throws at you. But it's always great to have some ideas of different locations and kind of, you know, make your own luck when it comes to landscape photography. And this is a location that I had seen on a couple of photos uh, as I was doing some research, but nobody was actually saying where exactly it was. So after about three and a half hours of searching Google Earth, different photos, trying to line up different photos I did know where they were to the mountain ridge mm -hmm. and I finally pinpointed approximately where this was and without actually you know scouting it the night before we uh, drove out there in the morning before dawn got out there just as the first light was showing up and uh, hiked out to this location and just waited for the perfect moment uh, between gusts of wind that was ruining the reflection and these uh, storms that actually came over and we actually got a fair bit of rain in between uh, moments of mm -hmm. uh, clarity and view. So I hear tenacity and grit and a bit of audacity coming up for you as values in going ahead and finding this, this spot in this location. Yeah, sometimes you have to uh, grin and bear it and wake up before you really want to and, uh, you know, explore. I also and... love that phrase, make your own luck. Yes. You know, it's like, I'll, I'll depend on some things, but other stuff I'm going to muscle out. Yeah. I you must know, you, confess, you... when I look at this image, I get the feeling that the sky, it's scoured. I mean, it's just scouring across there. Yeah, the, the, the clouds, and I mean, the, the weather was very, very dramatic and dynamic that morning. And you just didn't know how long your moment was going to last of this reflection before, you know, wind gusts rippled across and just destroyed the uh, reflection completely. So suddenly I have this image of you standing on a beaver dam, like yelling at Mother Nature, could you just hold off for one more minute? I just need a photo. That Any chance happens that actually happened? very often. <laughs> You're like, it's like, you've been there, Aaron. It's true, actually, I have not, but yeah. Um, so in addition to the beaver dam and Mother Nature, what other difficulties did you have in capturing this image? Um, mostly was finding it. Like I said, you know, several hours of pouring over the laptop, trying to compare ridgeline, because uh, there's several different valleys you can see this particular mountain from, and, you know, five or six different roads and lots of different places you can stop, and just trying to pare down where it was without the opportunity of um, scouting it the night before, because we were shooting other things and doing other things. It just, you know, I tried to scout, you know, the day before if I'm going to do a sunrise shoot, but, you know, Time was of the essence. It was the very tail end of an 18 day road trip. Um, me and my shooting partner were, you know, we're exhausted. Uh, she yeah. actually developed a pinched nerve in her leg. That's this like right after this shoot, we ended up in the ER worried that she had a blood clot. And uh, so it was kind of the pinnacle. The, we did everything we came to get. We got the shot we really wanted. It's, mm -hmm. you know, mother nature and the world's telling us, okay, it's time to take care of yourself, time to go home. Um, but, you, you know, we got what we came to get. So I kind of hear you saying that this shot made 18 days, exhaustion, pinched nerves, you know, grueling over a laptop map and cartography. This image made it worth it. It did. And it's, it's one of those shots that, you know, I would be proud to hang in my uh, house. I'm actually planning on having this printed very, very large to put into my living room as soon as I can scrounge up the funds to do it. 
What was difficult for you about editing this work? The dramatic elements, the, the emotions the moment had, it's always a difficult thing to both bring reality and emotion into an image um, to a way that inspires other people to go out there and find their own moments. That moves me the way standing in front of Mother Nature like this moment did uh, moves me. So what do you feel now when you look at this image, you know, having taken this, what was it last year or the year before? Uh, this was, I guess, October of last year. So last fall. Okay. So are the emotions different now? You know, what is different now? Um, what's different now is knowing what the rest of the day brought, um, you know, really being fearful for my uh, shooting partner's health. Um, you know, fearful that, you know, the drive and the, you know, constant go that we had, you know, put ourselves through had endangered her health in some way. But mm -hmm. it was also, you know, looking back on it, you know, Mother Nature saying, I'm throwing everything I've got at you, but you will capture it in ways that you will look back on and, you know, be proud of. So what did you learn as a craftsman in capturing this image? That sometimes, you know, if you roll the dice, you'll come up uh, with better than snake eyes. Um, we, didn't, <laughs> we didn't know if we were going to land on the right spot. We didn't know what the, you know, what the weather was going to bring. We knew the weather was going to be changing. It had been perfectly clear skies, you know, almost too good for landscape photography for days before this. And we knew this weather system was coming. Um, we didn't know if it was just going to be a complete disaster of a morning or you know, what, what the shot brought, you know, yeah. great moments li live on a knife's edge of ruined shots and too good of weather. I love that, that knife's edge, because it really evokes that balance that goes into getting something like this. Yeah. So we talked about values such as, you know, audacity and grit and temerity, but there's also, you know, the love and the worry that go into creating something like this. Absolutely. But what other pieces of you are in this end result? It's a lot of my technical skills that I've built up over the years. I've, you know, put a lot of, you know, both my heart and soul, and but also technical knowledge that I've put together to, you know, bring out those heart and soul into it. Um, for me, I believe that art is equal parts technical and soul and trying to marry the two in a way that really, you know, conveys the motion of the moment and the nature and landscape in a way that really inspires other people to get out and see it for themselves is something that really drives me to present nature in unique and beautiful ways. So for me as the observer, the watcher, you know, the person standing on this side trying to enter this image, what do you want me you know, what do I, what do you want me to take with me after I view this photo? What do you want me to remember? Um, both the beauty and the light, but also the raw nature of nature of, you know, of the landscape that, you know, um, in very dramatic times, beauty still exists. And it's worth mm -hmm. getting up, even if you think you're going to get rained on to see it. I love that phrase, John. Even in dramatic times, beauty still exists. And it feels like you should write that on the back of this photo, just as a reminder. And it also I, sounds like that's a bit of a mantra for you. It is. Um, Can we talk more about that? I, I started doing landscape photography, or photography in general, as another way to get myself outdoors. I spent a number of years kind of afraid of being outdoors. I had... Uh, a scare with malignant melanoma when I was younger and spent a lot of time afraid of being outdoors and I kind of lost touch with mother nature and um you know between some years cycling and then getting into photography it's really let me renew my love of being outdoors and you know rolling with what mother nature brings to me because it's better than being inside and not experiencing these moments. That actually, that brings up an incredible amount of emotion in me listening to that, you know, because it feel, I feel, I kind of feel like you're the challenge then in this photo as well. You know, everything that goes into making an image like this, not just the technical skills 
but the love and the creativity and the willingness to get up and try it again. Yeah. You're not always going to get this perfect reflection. You're not always going to get the dramatic uh, sky, but it's always willing and worth going out there and finding out what mother nature is going to throw at you. Cause even if you don't click the shutter, it's worth just watching. And that's what I kind of hope people do. Even if they don't carry camera into the landscape, at least go out there and experience it because sitting at home and you know, it, it isn't enough for me personally. Yeah. I hear the connection. You want people to step into, not just observe you. You don't want them to be a bystander. You want, you want them in the picture with you is what I feel. Yeah. Okay. Be surrounded um, by the landscape, landscape photography, just out of curiosity. Hmm? Why landscape photography? It was really getting outdoors. It was getting away mm -hmm. from the computer. It was getting back into the forests and onto the edge of the lake, um, places I spent a lot of time growing up in East mm -hmm. Texas, um, you know, in the natural environment is what I wanted to be in. Mm -hmm. And the, the camera was a way to, you know, carry me further than my, at the time, ex myself at that moment would be willing to do on its own. So the camera was kind of a driving force to push myself further into the landscape. Images transport is what I hear you saying then. Yeah, definitely. John, this, this is a beautiful photograph. And I said, you know, the scour, you know, it's just that, you know, as the sky scours, you know, across this landscape, that's what I feel. But I want to go, you know, where that vantage point is taking me back there. You know, that's where I'd like to go. Just set up camp for a little bit and really just take a deep breath. Very much so. Yeah. Wow. John, thank you. This is beautiful. Thank you. I really appreciate, you know, you talking more about it. Uh, I'm right. welcome to be here. Thank you. <laughs> All, right. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing now. Um, and that's it. So everybody, um, like I said, it's incredibly generous of Lisa and Barbara and John to step up and do this. Um, it's, it's hard to do. And they did really a beautiful job of letting us in and seeing on the inside what's going on up there. Um, but this is the point now where if anybody has questions, I'm more than happy to answer a few. Okay, Erin, uh, let's see. Before we get to questions, I want to make sure I got them all. Um, I want to read, I've been keeping up with the comments, and I want to give some feedback from the audience to our guests. So for, we're going to start with Lisa. And this is from Karen Riley. And she just wanted to say, I really appreciate your craftsmanship. Rachel said, it's beautiful. It makes me think of the ocean. Susan Upton says it's a beautiful piece. Love the passion and the in, in, and the incorporated design of your passion for the stitching. And Egidio says it's a really beautiful piece of jewelry. It looks like a historical artifact. And that was something that I went, he's so right. You know, just uh, it just it was so beautiful. And um I did jewelry for five minutes. And I th your work is just absolutely stunning so i'm looking forward to um catching up with you a year from now and and seeing what the jewelry um designs i i hope that you get your business up and running so this is gonna be exciting for you she um, will don't, don't you worry she will thank you um yeah so, i've seen uh, barbara um, some comments that came in for you was from Egidio is amazing macro. Is that you and the reflection, Barbara? Oh, yeah. I don't know if she, her, um, if her mic's on, um, but he wanted to know. Barbara, if you're on mute. Come off mute, Barbara. Yeah. Okay. I'm back. Yeah. Um, Egidio wanted to know if that was you and the reflection of the, um, the droplet. Well, Thank you, Egidio. I think it's been a while since I took that and looked at it up close, but I think it's another flower. I, I don't think it's me. Yeah. Um, Jamie says, um, it's more of a statement, stop and smell the roses, appreciate your surroundings, it's very peaceful. Susan says, it's a beautiful macro, definitely requires a lot of patience to master. 
Karen Riley says the droplets are amazing. And uh, Rachel's, okay, let's see. Um, Rachel says, love the reflection in the dew drop. And um, <laughs> Susan and John both agree, Erin. That was a tough question. Great answer, Barbara. <laughs> so, Thank you all. Yeah. So John, um, Susan has, uh, Susan Upton um, is saying it's just a breathtaking, breathtaking John. And Karen says, this makes me appreciate all the work and planning that goes into great photographs. Ajidia says that dedication makes true photographers. Um, Lisa, who is our jewelry designer, says, I can relate to the knife edge. Balance comment, soldering metal is much the same in that you have to take the piece to the edge of destruction to get the result you want. That's a beautiful way to put that, Lisa. You take a piece to the edge True. of destruction to get that moment. Wow. True. <laughs> wow. Powerful. It is powerful, yeah. Um, Jamie says, nature gives us all a reason to get up every morning. That is very true. And Karen said, um, actually, so that was for John. So now we're going to go to a question for um, you, Erin, if you're ready for one. I am ready. So Karen wants to know, what would be the best questions to answer on Instagram when you post a picture so that you can relate better to your audience? That's a hugely, that's a wonderful question. Um, I think, you know, I think it's part of the editing process as a whole. You know, if you look at that image and you're thinking about what you want the people viewing that image to see, to know about you, to what went into this. So Lisa, when we were talking um, about you and you were talking about that heavy piece of leather uh, that you had, you know, where it had all the marks on it, mm -hmm. it sounds like that is a witness to the creative process. And it feels like that piece there almost answers so much of the question that goes into how would you describe it? What do you want people to know about it? But the reason we do coaching sessions like this is so that you all as artists are ready to ask yourselves those questions and then to be able to answer them, okay? Because John gave us that beautiful example of the knife edge and then Lisa really helped to extrapolate on that. Okay, but now this is something John can take forward and when he's talking to people, he's got that you're gonna take an image to the edge of destruction, okay? And then how do we balance there? All right, so good questions, Karen, are really uh, an element of soul searching. They're a willingness to uh, perhaps go where you might not have wanted to go before. And it's kind of staring into a deep pit sometimes. And you're like, oh, what's down there? And really pulling in to find out. And using images really helps us to grapple with some of that. Does that answer your question, Karen? I think I've got her on mute, so oh. <laughs> I'll, look for, I'll look for a reply from her in chat. Um, so this is a question, so for all the guests, um, Susan Upton wants to know, I would like to know how each presenter decides when the post-processing or tweaking, if you will, is deemed enough, even with the metal work, when is it complete? So, Barbara, do you want to start? Um, I, it's, it's, it's almost to that edge thing again, the, the point of destruction. I, for, for my work, for nature work, I want it to, to be natural. I want it to look like it, like, like the way I saw it when I took it. So I don't personally go so far as to try to take it to an extreme, like, like a, a beautiful sunset. I want it to look like I saw it. I don't want it to, for my work, I don't want it to be so colorful and so dramatic that it that it looks overly photoshopped. It personally, looks, you want it to look tampered, is what I hear you saying. Right. I I, no. I do edit, but I want it to look like I didn't, um, because and again, other people want it to be really artsy and and they want to take it to a little bit more extreme. But for my work, I want it to, to be some you know realistic and like you were there and it, and that's the way it looked. And so I edit to enhance, but not to alter. 
And I hear that as that's a value of yours, Barbara, you know, that nature. Well, for that, my work, I like other yeah. people's work that, that is artsy and, yeah. and more dramatic, but for my work, it's, it's yeah. more realism and more, um, you know, the way it, the way it really looked to me rather than trying to take it to a, a little bit distorted further artsy, yeah. uh, artsy, artsy, creative, um, yeah. point. Linda, could you ask the question again so the other people can answer you it bet. too? You bet. Um, so how do you know when your post-processing or your tweaking is done? When do you know if it's enough? Please. I can jump in. Um, oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. I was say, I always sit on images for at least a day, probably two days. I, I sleep, well, I literally sleep on it. Um, and during my editing process, I sit back and I... I gauge that, again, balancing point of how I saw it with my eyes and how I saw it with my soul. And if I try to push it, you know, too far or not far enough, you know, one part of me or another will start to speak saying, that's not how it was in reality, but it wasn't also not how the emotions hit me. So, speaking is it's a long process to find that point. Absolutely. Um, for me, I, I was watching a, a metal forming video and I believe it was from um, Charles Luton Brain. And he said he, um, he was talking about the, the point where you get to stage B, where you get, to, you get a piece to the point where you like it, stop. Stop yourself right there. Don't take it any further. Pick up a new piece of metal and begin again. And so you're not, because you can't, what, once you take it to, you go too far, you can't go back again. You can't turn, you know, you can't un, uncreate what you've just done. And so, um, or, the, or the changes that you've made or, or you know, for the majority, of the majority of the time, you can't undo it. And so he said, when, when you get to stage B and you're happy with it, stop, stop yourself. <laughs> and then, um, you know, and then pick up a new piece of metal and start again. And he um, really encourages um, ha giving yourself time in the studio to play around with things and not stick so much on a strict schedule of I'm, I'm going to make A, B, and C, but you're just going to play around with stuff and see what it see what it does and you know and and try new things and um, give yourself time give you know forgive give yourself a forgiving amount of time to um, play with the materials and the medium and and um, see yeah. what it gives you, brings you. Lisa, thank you, that was beautiful. Okay. Linda, do we have anything else in the chat line? Don't think we do. I think that, okay. um, I think we covered all the questions. I might have skimmed over a couple of comments, but I'll let you wrap it up and I'll. Okay. Well, everybody, you know, as Linda said at the very beginning here, her uh, goal for these sessions is to connect, inspire, and create. And I hope that you see that through the questions we can ask and answer through uh, our artwork and what we ask of ourselves when we do something creative like this, that we're achieving that, that connection aspect. Um, I loved looking at all of these different pieces and it really was a challenge for me to choose just one from each artist uh, to work with here. But I also hope that they got something out of these questions and are really going to help them to challenge them to make them better artists going forward and to live their own values through their work as well. And they're doing that now, but I want them to go even bigger with it. You know, bring that heart, that joy out there with it. So I cannot thank you all enough for volunteering to come up and do this. And I so appreciated doing this work with you. So yeah. Thanks. Right. Thank you for helping us dig into ourselves a little bit, Erin. And I, I'm on an iPad, so I can't type my answer right now, but thank you all for your nice comments. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Lisa, you're new to this group and you're in a room with a <laughs> bunch of photographers and you're like, I'm here. And right. I think, honestly, it was fun because mm -hmm. you are bringing a completely different creative piece of the, you know, the art world, you know, we're photographers, there are people in here that are bloggers, uh, we're all contributing to something. And, you know, 
I just see it as a, you know, please come back. We're not always oh, just you. taking photography, but you know, you will need to come back because you're going to have to take photos of your, your beautiful pieces yes. at some yes. point. And yes. you're going to pick up tips from some of these people, or you might meet a photographer in here at some point to do some collaboration with. So yeah, I hope yeah. you come back. Barbara, I, Okay, here's a confession. I know Barbara. I love Barbara. And I, I just, I, any opportunity I get a chance to talk to her, it just, I don't know, it just brings me joy. So I was super, super excited to see that you were one of the people that Aaron chose. And John Fisher and I know each other um, from Instagram. And at, at, and we do go out and shoot every once in a while. So, um, you know, I, I give him a hard time, but let me, let me, this full disclosure, um, Aaron was, you know, kind of trying to figure out who should she ask. And so I gave her a whole bucket full of names and I said, I don't want to know who you pick. So surprise me. And I did find out a couple of days ago, but I wasn't sure what to expect. And I just, um, and thrilled that each of you guys came on and, and shared a little bit about yourself mm -hmm. and what your art means to you. And so Aaron, I know the work you do. I know how passionate you are about it because you won't stop talking about it. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, it, it, I have, was sitting, sitting in the hot seat with you a couple of weeks, a month ago. weeks ago and it was uncomfortable because that's not what I want to do. And when I see what you've done with these three guests, it was, it was beautiful. And I, I really hope that they got something out of the time with you because I think that us sitting at home may process the way we do what we do a little bit better, a little bit stronger, a little bit more um, passionately. Yeah. So uh, one tiny question come through. Jamie was asking where everybody, the artists were from. Barbara, yeah. you're from up by Waco, right? In, in Waco. Waco. In Waco. Yeah. And Lisa is in Austin. I'm, I'm in Austin. Yeah. Yep. And John, you were outside of Dallas. Yeah, outside of Dallas. Dallas. Yeah. All, all okay. Texas people. Yeah. 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 That was um, one last comment, everybody. I was really looking for a portrait photographer, but when I kept typing portrait photographer into as a search string on Instagram, I came up with what I'm like, I'm not fairly positive. These might be sex workers. And I'm like, I don't want to be doing that on <laughs> as a coaching <laughs> session. So I'm like, Listen, I'm going to go off script here and I'm going to go find someone else. And that's why I was like, I'm going to go get a different kind of art. Cause I'm like, I don't want to talk about, yeah. I'm like, not comfortable. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> you know, it could have jazzed up our evening a little bit. <laughs> a lot of them do flirt with a very thin line there. Yeah, we're on that knife edge again. We're back on oh, that yeah. edge. A different kind like, of knife is edge. Porn or not? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. But my job, what I feel like my job here is, is to connect. And if you've never met me, this is something you need to know. I like to say... Aaron meet John, Barbara meet J Jamie, and it goes on and on, and it just doesn't stop because I believe in keeping your your nets wide. Catch what you catch all you can, sort through it, and and work with what you got. But tonight we're going to connect with Ben Cowan, who is who came last week. I think that was his first time. He is new to Instagram. And he is, I think he just started posting last week. So go check him out. He's at Finn's Feathers Photos. And uh, I think he put it in the chat line. I don't usually do shout outs like this, but I really want to connect with people. And I put Ben on the spot last week and said, who are you and how'd you find us? And he was, he was such a, a gracious guy. So check his Instagram out, follow him if you want. Hopefully he'll meet some friends here and, and he'll come back. Erin's job was to inspire you tonight. I think she did. And your job is to go out and create. So please create, have fun, do what makes your heart happy and come back next week because we're gonna have Ruth Hoyt back. She's the bird people lover. And <laughs> her, <laughs> people that don't like birds, 
are starting to go, well, maybe I want to shoot birds. Ruth is very inspiring, but she's also very technical. And that's something that we all need help with when we're after those little bitty fast flying feathers. So come back next week. Her, her uh, session is called Coming at You Birds in Flight. So guys, have a safe week and I will hopefully see you guys next week.